The construction of the Cathedral of San Giorgio in Ferrara dates back to the early 12th century, a relatively prosperous period for the city that was expanding towards the north. The building was built by Bishop Landulf, consuls and citizens together in order to celebrate the religious and political autonomy from the Church of Ravenna after the time of the investiture controversy. On September 30, 1132, Pope Innocent II granted the town a chance to build a structure, which would have been placed directly under the apostolic protection. The new church would then be a symbol of rebirth from the previous period of moral decadence. The dedication of the building to St. George, the Dragon Slayer, is not accidental and it is rather an act of revenge against the power of the city in Romagna. The facade is very rich, divided into three parts by two powerful buttresses and characterized by the union of two almost opposed styles, Gothic and Romanesque. The lower part of the building, immediately below the first gallery, is the oldest nucleus of the structure and is Romanesque style. Continuing upwards, you can see a first loggia marked with three lancets containing other three arcs, separated one another by two columns. Immediately above them, there is an oculus. The second loggia, clearly Gothic style, shows the same space division while the three spires that embellish the facade have four blind arcs with remarkable play surmounted by lodges with flying buttresses. To complete the decoration, other three oculi like those seen in the first loggia. The width of the church gives it an importance worthy of the new trend of the city, but the height as well plays a major role. The constant play of empty and full spaces in the vertical dimension lightens the structure and projects it ideally skyward. The decorative cycle that adorns the cathedral is a vibrant work of catechesis for the Christian and admonishes him from living a life dedicated to sin. All the pictures, namely, revolve around the concept of divine judgment and salvation in the afterlife. The insistence and complexity of the representations make this cycle unique in Italy. The main portal has a portico supported by two lions with column-bearing telemans supporting a pair of little columns. Immediately above, there is a tripartite loggia with inside a terracotta depicting the Madonna with the child. Between a lunette and the other one, judgment theme begins to emerge with the resurrected who open their sarcophagi with difficulty, awakened from the angelic trumpets on the above trabiation. Here the scene is based on the division of the blessed from the damned and who measures the faults and merits of each Christian is the Archangel Michael. At his feet, a little devil tries skillfully to distort the result of weighing. The penitent ranks, to the right of the observer, is tied together by a heavy chain and among them monstrous creatures with animal head are to be seen. Ideally, the procession ends on the lunette to the right, where a demonic creature with gaping mouths swallows the reprobates, while others damned are boiled in a cauldron from a few eager devils. On the other hand, the blessed, with folded hands and a crown on their heads, are sent to the figure of Abraham enclosed in the left lunette. The patriarch holds in an affectionate hug a bevy of blessed souls, and is bigger than the others. His importance for the Church is highlighted by altering the proportions. In the middle of the tympanon above the trabiation is Christ the Judge sitting on the throne, 
enclosed in a mystical almond. This type of representation is also present in the cycle of frescoes of the Abbey of Pomposa and seems to derive from a passage of the Book of Revelation by John stating that Around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. Christ is surrounded by two angels holding the instruments of the Passion, the Madonna and the Evangelist John. To complete the work are other musicians, a possible reference to the elders of the Apocalypse. The decorations of the central portal are the work of Master Nicolaus and date from around 1135. In the lunette above the entrance there is a representation of Saint George killing the dragon. The image of the saint on horseback looks like as if it wanted to exit the spatial limits in which it is confined. Just below there are seven episodes relating to Jesus' life, ranging from the visitation to the baptisms in the Jordan. Proceeding along the gems you can see grotesque and monstrous figures who nicely fit into the iconographic context of the facade of the church. The side of the building facing the square was probably conceived as a sort of second facade. Above the portico of the shops, there is a first row of blind arcades of the Romanesque style. Above it, there is a band of 20 large round arcs enclosing some three light windows. The decoration is finally completed by a beautiful portico created by a quaternary series of stilted arcades of almost Venetian style and separated one another by curious mullions. Their shape is quite varied, zigzag, intertwined, rolled up on themselves to witness the goodness of the execution. In the middle of the site you can see the remains of a magnificent walled portal, the so-called Porta dei Mesi. Closed in 1717 and demolished 20 years later, it was decorated with tiles dating back to the 13th century. They represent various agricultural jobs to be done during the months of the year and are now kept in the museum next to the cathedral. Impressive is the size of the white and red marble bell tower started in the 15th century. Although it cannot be confirmed by medieval texts, the theory that Leon Battista Alberti would have contributed to the design of the structure is widely accepted. Despite its grandeur, the building is considered incomplete and without a cusp. The construction was interrupted several times due to seismic phenomena, which the territory is exposed to, and to the huge cost of work that not even the Holy See wished to take.